Yeah. My name is Jonathan Irish, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Cancer Biology here at Vanderbilt University. So my lab is interested in how signaling controls cellular interactions, both in healthy development and in cancer. And our lab's toolkit really focuses on single cell tools. So what we want to do is peer into the cells and understand their signaling networks, get at how the cells think, and maybe change how they think uh, by stimulating them particular ways or by treating them with compounds and control the outcome of cell signaling interactions. Yeah, so our work is at the intersection of cancer immunology and computational biology. And I got really into this question of how can we predict how patients are going to respond to treatments. And what I wanted to be able to do was take a sample or a biopsy from a patient and study all of the cells in it. Um, and it might be a pre-treatment or post-treatment sample. And by looking at the cells and seeing which cells were there or seeing how they signaled, be able to predict how the patient was going to be respond to a treatment. So it's, it's a type of personalized medicine where it's at the single cell level and we can understand every cell within a patient's biopsy. And ideally, we'd like to understand how immune cells interact with cancer cells and reprogram those immune cancer interactions. I was attracted to cancer research and personalized medicine within cancer research because I wanted to create new tools that would diagnose patients and indicate how those patients should be treated. And so I want to marry the basic research tools that we have in the lab with the opportunity to look at the patient's own cells and own tissue and reveal the way that that patient should be treated or reveal the mechanism of resistance for an existing treatment. So that's one of the things that really brought me in. And so as a, as a kid, I saw friends and family members going through cancer treatment and it was very frustrating when the, it was not clear how that patient should be treated or that there was no treatment available. And so I wanted to think, how can we learn from the biology of what makes the cells resistant to come up with new treatments? And so, I think investing in basic science is critical because we're really at an age of discovery uh, for human biology. Humans are relatively understudied compared to the research models that we're using, and we've just created the technology that can study human tissues at the single cell level. And so it's only recently become possible to take patient samples um, from a human to take a biopsy and study them in the lab the way that we study them in my lab. And so it's common for a student's project in my lab to take um, a biopsy from the operating room, bring it back to the lab, separate out all of the single cells in it, and then use a technology called mass cytometry to measure all of the different um, signaling events. I, I did my PhD training in Gary Nolan's lab at Stanford, and uh, the Nolan lab is a a technology lab that emphasizes single cell tools. And so this is where I really got into single cell flow cytometry and eventually mass cytometry. For my postdoc, I worked with um, Ron Levy at Stanford and Ron is a physician scientist, and so there I was immersed in an environment of clinical translational research where we were bringing the technology that I created in my PhD into the clinical setting. And so this set me up well for Vanderbilt where our projects, we wanted to take the approach from immunology, the single cell approach, into clinical solid tumor research. Our lab emphasizes the use of single cell tools, and I remember the first time that I studied primary human leukemia samples. We took the single cell tools and we applied them to the patient's blood and we realized that there were multiple populations of cells within the leukemia population. We'd originally thought that it was just one type of cell and that it signaled in one way. And the single cell tool revealed that there were multiple populations of cells and that they all responded differently, both to their environment and to treatment. And this was a, a key insight. We realized some tumors and some cancers are composed of multiple populations, whereas others have primarily one type of cell within them. And this insight really led us to understand some of the things that make one type of cancer more aggressive than others. And so now our goal has been to take these single cell tools and bring them into new areas. And single cell is really new to solid tumor research because it's been hard to take the cancer cells apart and to get them into the single cell suspension and to know what to measure about those cells. And so a lot of our research has focused on 
what do you measure to identify each different type of cell within a brain tumor or within a melanoma tumor sample. And so the excitement of revealing new types of cells and the power of understanding how to better treat a patient based on the biology of their disease, based on the biology that we see in their single cells, um, is really what kind of keeps me going every day and animates our lab. It's also really exciting to be able to take a patient biopsy and to learn from the patient's material, maybe their blood or their tumor after they've been treated and see, is the treatment working? Which, what are the cells that are left after the treatment? Because those are most likely the resistant cells. And if we can pull those out and see, was there a small population there at the beginning that looks like those resistant cells? And what makes those cells different? What's different about their signaling or how they interact with other cells? We can then target that from the very beginning and we might be able to wipe out that resistant population very early on. Yeah, there were a lot of things that attracted me to Vanderbilt. And so one of the key things is the amazing instruments and shared resources at Vanderbilt. So single cell tools, flow cytometry is really essential to my research and the flow cytometry facilities are phenomenal at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt also invested in mass cytometry, which is something that my lab has expertise in. And so they brought in this new technology called CYTOF. And we were one of the 15th institutions in the world to get CYTOF. And it was very, very new at the time. It was the generation one instrument. And um, it was just fantastic that Vanderbilt made that investment in the technology, but also made it a shared resource that's available to um, everybody at Vanderbilt. And so a new student coming into my lab or other labs at Vanderbilt has access to cutting edge flow cytometry, to amazing uh, imaging instruments, super resolution imaging, you name it. So these amazing, powerful cutting edge instruments are available in shared resources. So the, the strength of the shared resources was one of the major things that attracted me to Vanderbilt. One of Vanderbilt's other strengths is in quantitative biology, which is essential to all of the work going on in my lab. Um, and so the uh, Vanderbilt has a center for quantitative sciences that I'm part of and um, I was really impressed with uh, Vanderbilt's strategy for dealing with the flood of genomic data um, coming out of Vantage and the Vanguard data analysis resources that are available for that. And so um, the power of the quantitative community, the bioinformatics, statistical and computational biology community was really a draw for me when I was looking at Vanderbilt versus other places. And I think that this is one of the really essential areas in biology right now is to bring in new computational tools, bring in quantitative tools and pair them with strong basic science at the bench and clinical uh, research. One of the other things that really drew me to Vanderbilt was uh, the intersection between clinical research and basic research, which is essential to my lab. And so my lab uh, studies human tissue that comes out of the operating room. Human biopsies really power up all of our research. So collaborations with surgeons and physician scientists are essential to my work. So, kind of These days, the challenge in every basic research field is that we get a flood of data. So in our lab, we're doing single cell biology. And for every cell, we measure 35 things. Um, and we're measuring millions of cells at a rate of hundreds per second. And so for each patient sample, we get a million cells. But then we get multiple samples over time. And we have multiple patients. And so we're drowning in data which is an amazing opportunity and resource, but we need to create the computational tools to help us go through all of that data and to identify new populations of cells or identify signatures of how a patient will respond. So recently, one of our big successes in the last year is we created a computational tool that's a first step towards teaching computers to identify different types of cells, to identify cancer cells and different populations of immune cells. And so the idea here is that we um, use single cell tools to measure millions of cells, to measure the proteins and signaling events within them. And then we create a score, a computational label to define the different types of cells. And so now I as an expert go in and I say, these are T cells, these are cancer cells. 
and we can teach the algorithm, this is what cancer cells look like, this is what T cells look like, these are the proteins they express, these are the signaling events that you see within those populations, and now we might take a new sample that might be blood from a healthy person or blood from a cancer patient and ask, can the computer identify cancer cells within that sample? Or could it even suggest a treatment that would be matched well to the type of cells that were seen within that sample? So I think that's really one of the powers and promises and one of our biggest successes in the last year was we created this first step towards the computer being able to identify cells, cancer cells or immune cells. Okay. One of the big pieces of advice I have for new graduate students is to learn to program. I think that it's really essential these days to understand how the data are analyzed and to be able to interact with computational biologists, even if you're not the one doing the programming. Another piece of advice that I have for new graduate students is to develop collaborations and be part of a team of collaborators. This is one of the things that's really powerful at Vanderbilt is that with the amazing shared resources and the amazing collaborators, you can power up your project by bringing in diverse technologies uh, onto your research question. And so I would suggest that new graduate students really think about how to develop collaboration skills and work with people who are from a very different area from where they are. So NIH support is essential for our research right now, but we're going through an era uh, where my lab is studying primary human tissues and a lot of the work is discovery work. And so we're working right at the cutting edge and some of the critical funding for my lab has been from the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center, the, um, the Vanderbilt uh, Ambassadors, the Hematology Helping Hands Fund. And this work has been for uh, pilot studies that have created new technologies or allowed us to move tools that came out of immunology into solid tumor or other types of cancer research. And so without this pilot funding that really got those projects going, the project never would have started. It was, it was too new, too out there for the NIH funding. What we really needed was that early pilot funding to get the work going, to get the preliminary data, and then put together the NIH grant. And so we and our collaborators have been doing these types of pilots, and now we're starting to see they're really um, bearing fruit. We're seeing the return on that early investment with the pilot funds. And so we really have to thank the Cancer Center and the Vanderbilt Ambassadors for taking the risk on these exciting new ideas um, where we're translating things into human tissue samples.